the G factor only accounts for maybe half or some amount on the test performance. For example, I get uh, pretty bad test anxiety. Like I was never, I mean, <laughs> I just don't enjoy tests. I enjoy going back into my cave and working. Like I've always enjoyed homework way more than tests, uh, no matter how hard the homework is, because I can go back to the cave and hide away and think deeply. There's something about being watched and having a time limit that really makes me anxious, and I could just see the mind not operating optimally at all. But you're saying underneath there, there's still a G factor. There's no still- question. There's No question. No question. Ah, boy. And if you get anxious taking the test, many people say, oh, I didn't do well because I'm anxious. Yeah. You know, I hear that a lot. Yeah. I say, well, fine. If you're really anxious during the test, the score will be a bad estimate of your G factor. Yeah. It doesn't mean the G factor isn't there. That's right. And by the way, standardized tests like the SAT, they're essentially intelligence tests. They are highly G loaded. Now, the the people who make the SAT don't want to mention that. For obvious, they have enough trouble justifying standardized testing, but to call it an intelligence test is really beyond the, the pale. But in fact, it's so highly correlated because it's a reasoning test. The SAT is a reasoning test, a verbal reasoning, mathematical reasoning. Yeah, and if it's a reasoning test, it has to be related to to G. But if people go in and take a standardized test, whether it's an IQ test or the SAT, and they happen to be sick that day with 102 fever, yeah. the score is not going to be a good estimate of their G. If they retake the test when they're not anxious or less anxious or don't have a fever, the score will go up and that will be a better estimate. But you can't say their G factor increased between the two tests. Well, it's interesting. So the question is, how wide of a battery of tests is required to estimate the G factor well? Because I'll give you as my personal example, I took the SAT and uh, I think it was called the ACT where I was too also. I, I took SAT many times. Every single time I got it perfect on math. And verbal, the time limit on the verbal made me very anxious. I did not, I mean, part of it, I didn't speak English very well, but honestly, it was like, you're supposed to remember stuff. And like, I was so anxious. And like, as I'm reading, I'm sweating. I can't, you know that like, um, that feeling you have when you're reading a book and you you just read a page and you know nothing about what you've read because you zoned out. That's the same feeling of like, I can't, I have to, you, you're like, nope, read and understand. And that anxiety is like, and you start seeing like the typography versus the content uh -huh. of the words. Like that was, I, I don't, it's interesting because um, I know that what they're measuring, I could see being correlated with, with something, but that anxiety or some aspect of the performance um, sure plays a, plays a factor. And I wonder how you sneak up in a stable way. I mean, this is a broader discussion about, as like uh, standardized testing, how you sneak up, how you get at the fact that I'm super anxious and still nevertheless measure some aspect of my intelligence. I wonder, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know if you can say it to that. That time limit sure is a pain. Yeah. Well, let me say this. There are two ways to approach the very real problem that you say that some people just get anxious or not good test takers. By the way, part of, Part of testing is you know the answer, you can figure out the answer, or you can't. Right. If you don't know the answer, there are many reasons you don't know the answer at that particular moment. You may have learned it once and forgotten it. You may It may be on the tip of your tongue and you just can't get it because you're anxious about the time limit. You may never have learned it. You may never you you may have been exposed to it, but it was too complicated and you couldn't learn it. I mean, there are all kinds of, of reasons here. But for an individual to interpret your scores as an individual, whoever is interpreting the score has to take into account 
various things that would affect your individual score. Yeah. And that's why decisions about college admission or anything else where tests are used are, are hardly ever the only criterion to make a decision.